Hey free to play gang welcome back to another video so for today this has been a requested video as well so we're going to take a look at some of the ways that we can level up our espers and I'm going to increase in efficiencies so that means that I'm going to give you some advice on how to improve the levels of your espers from being a beginner all the way till the end game and these are the different steps that you can do so to enhance your efficacy and to make the most of your limited stamina. So the first approach is to level up your espers using experiment. So let's take a look at let's say uh, Fabrice over here who is not maxed out. Okay, so you go to growth and you go to advancement and you can see that you have some of these guys to use for EXP. Now some of these guys can come for free basically through events, basically through logins and some other places like achievements and so on and so forth. But for the most part, these guys do drop from practice stages and that's what we're going to look at next. So over here at the story, we can assess the practice stages and I would highly recommend you to do this only when you have your 2x EXP activated. And you can activate it by going to your inventory and spending some of these items called the EXP booster and also the EXP booster for 8 hours. Now if you're wondering where we can find more of these, you can just go to shops and go to your club shop which is oh ho ho whoa, whoa, and you can buy it for 400 club points. Now assuming that you have already activated a 2 times EXP, that's when you can participate in practice stages. And of course, I would highly recommend you to multi-battle, but because I'm already multi-battling, I'm not going to be able to do that. So this is just basically how you do it. Now the first approach to doing your practice stages is to use your Mona, okay? So Mona is going to be the most efficient way for you to farm EXP, at least for the early game. And I'm currently not at the early game anymore, and so Mona kind of loses her value a little bit in this stage over here, which is Purgatory 12. But she can still be used over here, except that you need to worry about herself being stunned by some of the espers over here. And that could potentially reduce your win rate from 100% to somewhere around 80 or even 70%. So practice stages is basically where everyone would usually find themselves in from the early game, mid game, and sometimes even the end game. But there is a reason why I say only some people would find themselves here in the end game, and that's because eventually we are going to get a little bit too strong for our own good and then we'll be able to find ways that we can farm more efficiently. So let's take a look at one of such techniques. Now before we continue on with the video, if you find that this has been helpful for you so far, do consider subscribing as subscribing is free and you can always change your mind. Thanks gang. Oh damn, what the heck, we got a go record over here. Now the third way that endgame players tend to farm EXP, and I mean this is just for like a very small minority of us, is to farm EXP in the chrono stage. And when we are doing chronos, we are actually bringing just a small team of like 3 or even less sometimes, and 2 fodder espers at the same time. So we are able to complete this stage relatively quickly, and we are actually killing 2 birds with 1 stone here. So, and of course number 1, we are able to farm relics, and on the other hand, we are able to farm EXP on the side. And the reason why this is so effective is because we technically do not need to pop our 2 times EXP for this to work well because most of us tend to do Ritual Miracles the whole day every single day. So at the same time, if you are able to get some EXP this way, that's going to be extremely, extremely efficient. But of course, this is more towards the end game, and this is only step 3. There is actually one more step further which further enhances our EXP rate. And of course, just to prove that this works, I'm just going to show you the rest of the run. And there we go, that's it. And the runtime should be about a minute, yep, 1 minute 6 seconds. Now this is the fourth and final way in my opinion, which is basically still in the Ritual Miracles. However, you are making the most out of it by just bringing one single Esper that can effectively dominate the entire Ritual Miracle, and therefore you can train for fodder at the same time. Granted that this is going to be slightly more uh, time consuming, because you can only use Esper such as Dona or maybe even Renzi, but I think Dona is the perfect choice here. And you're only going to be using one donor who is not very efficient at killing espers very fast. So definitely you're going to lose out a little bit in terms of like time. However, in terms of efficiency, this is definitely the best approach there is. And I do find myself doing this like probably quite a few times a week. And that's how I can level up more espers while I'm grinding for relics. And so that's how I actually juggle between having a lot of good relics and having a lot of 6 star espers at the same time. So there's not too much of a catch on the first two waves, it's just the third wave where I think Dona really shines a lot and that's because of his typing. So take note that he is a flow type and therefore the enemies over here are all inferno type. So with that said, there is a 50% chance that the enemies are going to miss you which means that you are probably not going to get all the stuns all that frequently and that's going to help you survive a lot. So as you can see over here, we actually dodged two different stuns if you did not even realize it. 
But of course, if we do get stunned, thankfully we are a donor, and being a donor, we are very tanky, so we are probably gonna be able to outlive like just a couple of stuns, that's not gonna be a problem. And our damage is gonna be so high because we are letting him hit us quite a few times before we retaliate with our passive, and so therefore we can actually do quite a significant amount of damage, and it is really surprising over here that we have not even been stunned once. But anyway, this is what the run tends to look like. It's rather efficient, and I think for my Dona right now, I have like a 80% efficiency, but that is still a good thing. Because do take note that in this game, your efficiency, uh, it doesn't really mean as much as in other games, right? Because let's say you fail two runs, what's that going to cost you? Just two stamina, right? It's not going to cost you 20 stamina, for example. Or rather in this case, 18 stamina. So this game is not very punishing on you for having a lower win rate. You are still going to be able to uh, effectively farm really well. So don't feel too bad if your win rate isn't like at 100%, okay? If it's at 80%, that's still fine. And of course, since we are farming EXP at the same time, I'm a little bit more lenient. I think having an 80% win rate is still perfectly okay. But of course, some ways that you can improve your win rate here is to have slightly more resistance so that you're probably going to be able to resist some of the stuns, which is the main reason why most of my runs get defeated. But anyway, that will be it for this video. I hope it was informative for you. If it did, don't forget to leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more dislike content. Anyway, this has been free to play by the way. And as always, I will see you in the next video. Wow, I actually timed that ending pretty well. And there you go. It's kind of long, three and a half minutes. That's what she said.